shoulder issue going on here from an accident. So tell them a bit about the accident, what happened to your shoulder. Uh, my shoulder was fractured in, well, I don't know, it was like splayed out three ways. So I'm not exactly sure what that looks like. I couldn't see it on the x-ray, but um, yeah, it was the neck, the surgical neck of my femur. And then kind of up into the head of it, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then since then, um, I basically just had frozen shoulder, like capsular pattern restriction. Um, so I was originally locked like this. I couldn't for like probably eight weeks. Mm -hmm. I couldn't uh, even like get under here enough to like wash my armpit. It was, it was like that stuck to my body. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, all ranges are still pretty limited. I'm pretty limited in external rotation anyways. Mm -hmm. I could say it's not that much better. Um, but uh, yeah, external is worse than internal. Um, but I've got really limited abduction right now. And my flexion's actually getting a lot better. My flexion's been the most improved for sure lately, because I used to not be able to get past 90 there either. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. We've good. had like, how many sessions? Four? Four, yeah. four, we've had four sessions, and it's it's coming along. Yeah. And the last session was only a few days ago. Um, yeah. Thursday? Yeah. yeah. So we'll do another little bit. Uh, I'm to show a few techniques. So let's just get a baseline for his, his ROM before we start, right? So we'll go back into flexion. So we'll just estimate right what that is, right? So here's 90, so that's even 125, 135 in that range. Maybe just do it for the camera right there. Yeah. Let's see what that is. Over pressure, you don't get much more. Okay. And then we can do abduction. So it's abduction, come on up. Sub 90, right? Maybe yeah. 80. Mm -hmm. External. Okay, there's neutral. So you're only maybe 20 degrees. Um, Which I had zero of like, I don't know what that was. Yeah. Right. And then we'll do just extension. What are we looking at? Extension about 40, 35 to 40. And then if you put your hand around your, around your back, so you see how far you can get up on the sacrum. It's just about the sacrum L. Yeah, around L2, maybe L1. Is that with the thumb? Okay, so <clears throat> let's write those numbers down and then we can do the comparison after. Someone just grab a pen and write those numbers down. I can give you to them again. So flexion, we've got about 130. Okay, abduction is at 80. Okay, external rotation is 20. And extension uh, is about... 30, and then with the medial rotation and extension. Huh? <laughs> it's like you said 40 Did I? It's already dropped down to 30. <laughs> and then about L2 on there. Well, right. Let's try the extension again. You guys tell me. Yeah, maybe closer to 40. Okay. And the medial rotation, what was it? It's L2. About L2? L2. Oh, okay. With the thumb up. With the thumb up. Yeah, I was really stretching it with my thumb. Okay. <laughs> there, there. Yeah, right. okay, so let's get you uh, face up on the table. Uh, that can be... Actually, just lie down without the pillow first. Face, face up. And we'll give you the pillow after. Here we go. Okay. We're going to do a little bit of arm pulling with him. Okay, so arms up. Put that on there. Across his chest. We take the handy bit, the handy belt. Did you bring the 50 footer this time? No, I didn't. There you go. Um, and we're just going to put the belt across the chest. So, it, which is our treatment arm? That one? Yeah. So, I'm going to put the buckle on the other side. Okay. Before you go up through the two buckles, open the buckle, there's in between the two, and then you start working it back and forth like that, cinching it down. How's that? Yep. Okay. Okay. So we're going to bring him up to his, his point of restriction, right? Yeah, back it off a little bit from there, and then I'm going to start pulling. Just 
okay? Yep. I've got my foot up here because if I don't, this table is going to topple over. Mm -hmm. On my table, you don't have to put the foot up on there. But sometimes I put my foot in as auxiliary when I do other stuff. Remember? That's a good arm pull. You can watch for a sulcus so you're not pulling too hard. I don't see anything there. Resting position for the GH joint. Anybody remember where the resting position is? Down by his head. This. Where it belongs. Like his side. Okay. Yeah. What is the resting position? It's right here. Oh. Right. So this is the position in the GH joint that has the most amount of room. It's just like you got it. So you kind of go up to. Uh, about 50 and then across 70. And it's like, like that, right? Down. Like, down. Oh, yeah. down? Wait. Yeah, you can almost feel it. <laughs> yeah, right there. I'm looking at his body and I'm like, oh, it's like this. He's sub-90. You're, you're up past 90. So yeah, sub yeah. And then I'll cross your body a bit more. Yeah, not that much. Halfway. Halfway. Good. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> so right there, just drop it down a little bit. Yeah. That's where you have the most room inside your GH joint. Uh, so you get the best traction in that position. Right? But if you want to target the different parts of the capsule, you can go to a 90 and drop it down a little bit. Then traction. I want to zoom in. Hmm? I'm zooming into the joint. Okay. Yeah, are we supposed to look for focus on anything? Yeah, I see. What's happening here? His arms are not coming apart. You no. don't see it. Uh, yeah, it's pulling. pretty locked down. Is there like feedback that we should be asking for a patient to tell us or anything? Yeah, how are we doing? Is that pinching? Is that too much there? It's not too much. It's not like pleasant, but it's not too much. Yeah. A little pressure there, Matt. triceps comes back mm -hmm. and as it elongates yeah. mm -hmm. okay good so like that a temperature difference between the shoulders right yeah, some there's heat yes yeah, toast it's toasting up inside here so now we're ready to uh, get some external rotation happening in this shoulder because we need external rotation to get the proper abduction uh, going up there, right? <clears throat> so I'm going to do a little active release on your uh, subscapularis, if that's okay. Mm. Yeah. Let's see, can I have that little rolly chair again? This is the funniest. Come on to in the axilla, right? Here's the axilla. Mm -hmm. You know, you're gonna come in and then pull out the scapula and come down onto the scapula. Okay. And so we know uh, subscapularis is internal rotation. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna have him do external rotation and internal rotation. So go ahead. And I just assist him. <laughs> this is called contractile myofascial release. Some people may think it's ART, but it's really not. We used to try to just fake ART and it's cool just to be funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was really kind of confusing as to what was what when we were in school. Was MET, I was going to say, like, did contract we... relax. It's like, what are we doing? Like, yeah. Yeah. You can't do MET, but you can do contract, contract relax. relax. Isn't that the same thing? Well, no. But, yeah. It's different. <laughs> it's a little different. It's a little subtle difference. I still don't really know the difference fully. Really. 
I can tell you the difference. Did you get charged more for one than brisket or nothing? I, I charted it as uh, CMFR, contractile myofascial release, release, which is what it is. Okay. And then in 1988, Michael Leahy uh, decided that he was going to do everything eccentrically and call it active release. Okay. But for concentrically and eccentrically, we're just working the muscle back and forth mm -hmm. with a contractile myofascial release, which was kind of invented in the 40s after the war to rehab the people with all the scar tissue. Oh, okay. And then it just got morphed into ART, right? Oh, that's actually really nice here now. Yeah, that's come along. So we got that. <laughs> and borrowed and changed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. And he made a lot of money on that. Right? Uh, yeah, that's true. We can see that. And so even even with this, like, uh, you know, have to be careful. You know, infringe any copyrights or trademark. But you know, mm -hmm. I'm telling you guys that if you apply pressure to tissue and you move that tissue, you don't have to be licensed to do that. It's like a pin and stretch is the same. Mm -hmm. idea. Yeah, that's you what I basically call it. Pin and stretch. Mm -hmm. Pin and stretch. Yeah. But you can do an active stretch or a passive one. I know, and I was told that by somebody else, like, oh, no, it's an active release because you're actively moving them. And I'm like, no, they have to actively move for it to be an active release. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So now we've kind of got that uh, subscap all warmed up, a bit of release on it. And now I, I pin his elbow to the side, and I pull out yeah. to the <laughs> point of restriction. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is not It's not comfortable. Okay, now you pull in. So now we're doing contract relax, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And out. And she anchored my body in just for kind of biomechanics uh, purposes. Okay, pull in. We're about five. And then relax out. Mm. Yeah, see, that's the end range right now. So you can call this end range, mm -hmm. uh, but we're also combining. Um, contract relax with it, right? Okay, pull in and then relax out. And see, the belt helps to stabilize uh, the scapula in that. Mm -hmm. Okay, you okay? Yep, a little bit of end range. Do you ever worry about how much you're leveraging the forearm that could cause fracture or anything? No? Yeah, I, I get the feel of the forearm and what's happening there, like too. Yeah. To well, and it's already, <laughs> my, my bones are healed. I'm, I'm three and a half months in, so my bones right. aren't going to break anymore. Yeah. Okay, and now um, I'm going to anchor on a bit more into the scapula, right? The belt's going to help me. And I'm bringing him out to abduction. They also can't run away. Just wrap something. Yeah. Are you simultaneously pushing the edge of the scapula towards his sacrum? Like uh, down? Uh, no, towards his thorax. Yeah, okay. yeah. Now pull your elbow towards my uh, forearm. So you're trying to abduct. Mm -hmm. The deduction. Relax. And then I just slowly take up the slack. Oh, to help increase the abduction. That's yeah. So this is humeral scapular mobilization because we're increasing the mobility between the humerus and the scapula, not the scapular thoracic. Okay, and then pull in. So right now he's at about uh, 95 to 100 degrees. Mm -hmm. And let that go. Is it just painful? Like because you're just making um, a face? Like yeah. Is it Bernie or no? No, it's no. like it, it, it's like being stuck and pushing through that. Mm -hmm. So it feels like it just doesn't want to want to go. Pulling. It's not even really pain. It's just like discomfort. Mm -hmm. It's your life. <laughs> <laughs> huh? You're not feeling pain. You're feeling discomfort. <laughs> Your head has to drop down, right? Mm -hmm. So you can do the you know, traction to get it to drop down. 
and I can feel it dropping down there a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, right there. It's my thumb right, right here right off the chromium. Dropped them down. So then you can use your palm, right? I go underneath under the, the palm, slide underneath, lock in, a little traction, and mobilize inferiorly. Oh yeah, that got his attention. <laughs> okay. That got his attention. Yeah, inferior glide is table way too low for me. I have it much higher, so I'm not bending over. It's too hard for me to do that way. Okay, and now we're ready for the uh, lateral distraction. And uh, Okay, so we can take a, we can stop that one for a second and then we're going